Hi, my name's Andy, uh, and this is a video about how to how I'm implementing search uh, in a REST API. So we've been doing a, a few videos um, about a very simple uh, application that provides a REST API. Um, today we're going to look at uh, how we're going to provide the ability to search through stuff. Okay, so um, we're going to have a look at um, what we've done so far. We're going to talk about how important search is. Uh, the way Twitter does it and why we're doing it a different way. Uh, how paging, <coughs> how paging through results, um, which we did last time was going to work with search. Uh, and then we're going to have a quick look at how it's implemented in the, uh, the Python version you can find online. So first of all, what are we doing? We're making a, um, a kind of a YouTube for poetry. Uh, we're going to let people upload poems and we're writing it API first. So we're writing the API before we write any of the rest of it. Um, so far, you can get poems using the API, and you can modify poems um, all through this uh, HTTP REST API. No website yet, but there will be one. Um, and uh, as we saw last time, we can make, we can ask for the list of poems and we can page through it. So that's just the list of all poems. So when this is an extremely popular site, that's going to be a lot of poems. So we're going to need to do something about that. Uh, this is how you get hold of poems. Uh, curl just makes a web request without using a browser and then here's the URL uh, I'm running it on my local machine so localhost uh, it's running on port 8080 um, and then the URL that we've chosen is API uh, just so that we know that this is where the REST API lives version 1 because this is the first um, we haven't modified the API yet we've only started creating it and then poems is the name of the collection in REST there's always a collection uh, in this case uh, the collection is called poems, and when we get that, we see the two example uh, poems that I've put in the system. Uh, their IDs come back as a list of IDs. Okay, so that's how uh, it works so far. I think the most important thing to say, or the first thing to say about search is that um, this is uh, probably the most important uh, uh, user interface our application is going to have. Most people are going to get to uh, the poem they want by searching for it. Um, certainly until we start providing something like suggestions or um, people who liked the things you like, like this or something like that, the only real way of finding anything, unless you're just going to page through everything, um, is by searching. So we need to make sure um, that it's an easy to use and uh, uh, a good feature. Okay, so how does Twitter do this? Oh, well, if you strip off the, um, the server bit of the URL, um, Twitter does something a bit like this. This is kind of modified to look like our stuff, but um, to demonstrate the way Twitter does it. The reason I use Twitter is because it's a nice example of uh, a REST API that seems to work. Um, so API version 1 all the same, and then what they do is they provide a collection, uh, or they, call it, they provide an area called search, and inside there um, they provide collections. So it's not the same collection that we were looking at a minute ago, which was just called poems. This is called search slash poems. Um, they use the dot .json to indicate what format they want, and then they have uh, Q equals, and then what you're searching for. In this case, we're searching for Robert Frost at percent twenty is a space. Um, so the, the the way you search is by looking in a different collection called search slash poems instead of in the um, the main collection, which is just called poems in our case. Um, and the question is why? Why would you do this? Well, I think there's a lot of good reasons why. Twitter would do this. So, number one, the main way you consume stuff from Twitter is not via search, uh, it's via a timeline. Um, so, uh, having a collection for the timeline, which is separate from the collection for searching, uh, seems more reasonable than if you're looking for poems, you may be looking for uh, the most recently uploaded poems, but you're also um, definitely going to be searching for, often going to be searching for stuff that's been on the site for a long time. Um, so there's less of an argument there. Um, they also may there also may be technical reasons for this. The um, the the search queries may go to a completely different server, um, and it's just easier to do that if it's, if it's in a separate collection like this. Well, when I say a completely different server, there's probably like a completely different data set. You know, there's a lot. Of it. Um, uh, the other thing is that there is a natural order of results in Twitter, which is the date order. Um, 
and the search is likely to come back in a different order from that. It's probably going to come back in relevance order or something like that. Um, so there are kind of different expectations. You know, the nice thing about JSON is, uh, JSON APIs, sorry, REST APIs, is that um, you you have a set of expectations about how it's going to work. Um, you know you've got a collection. That means you know you can get things from it. You know you can put things in it and so on. Um, and you would also, I would think, you would expect that the collection would generally come back in the same order even if you um, uh, provide different parameters, unless, of course, you provide an order by parameter or something like that. Um, <coughs> in, in, when, when you're searching tweets, you're probably uh, going to get back some kind of mixture of relevance and recentness, whereas when you're um, looking at the normal Twitter feed, um, it will be purely in date order. Again, slightly different for us in our um, poem system. Uh, there's less of a strong natural ordering, uh, and it'll be more about uh, just relevance-based stuff. You're more likely to be searching um, every time you use our thing, um, unless you're subscribed to the most recent poems, which obviously will be a bit more like a Twitter feed. So here's the way I've chosen to implement it. So it's the same collection, it's just called API V1 Poems. Same collection as if you're just listing poems. Um, and then I've added a URL parameter called search. And then we've put Robert Frost as our search term there. Um, so that's the curl command that does it. And if you um, if you look at the result, the result is just one. Instead of the two poems that we have in our example system, um, we get back one result. And uh, that result is in the same format as if you were just listing things. That's another reason why um, you might have a separate collection. If you want your search results uh, to send uh, you back different JSON from your normal listing of stuff, um, then uh, you might need um, you, you would it would be better to use a different collection so that it's uh, it's not surprising to anyone that it comes back in a different format. So in our case, search is just another way of viewing the same, this one collection that we've made called poems. It's just a way of viewing only some of that. Um, so nice and simple. Okay, so we looked at paging last time. How would paging work in the presence of search? Well, basically, you can just combine the two together. So you're going to search on a search term, and then you're going to provide a synth ID, um, and I think we called it size to say how many results you want back. Um, this time, you're, instead of paging through the whole list, you're paging through this um, filtered list that's been created by the search. Um, and if this is going to work, the search results must have to be reasonably stable um, in terms of if you run the search again a bit later, it should produce uh, you know, pretty much the same results in pretty much the same order. We can't produce them in a random order, otherwise paging through isn't going to work. You ask for the second page and you get um, a random collection of stuff instead of um, a fairly predictable set of stuff. Search doesn't have to remain consistent over weeks and weeks and weeks, but if you just page through the collection, um, you should see the first lot of results in the first page and the second lot of results in the second page, rather than um, seeing half of them again and missing some of them if you page through. Okay, so how have I implemented this in our Python implementation? You can uh, check the link to the blog post um, in the show notes um, to find a link to the source code on GitHub. Um, so we have this list poems function in our Python. We're adding a parameter called search, which defaults to um, uh, to none, which means that um, no search is happening. And then we've got an if. So previously, um, our IDs used to be just uh, the else part of this if here. So it just used to be id for id in db.poems, which basically means go and list everything in the in the uh, CouchDB database. Uh, and then do the paging stuff. So if you look at the previous video in the series, um, you can see the code that comes at the bottom of this, um, which pages through those IDs. So that would be the normal case, but when there's a search term, so if search is not none, that means we're searching for something, um, then instead of making IDs by just asking the database for poems, db.poems, um, we're going to call this function search poems, uh, providing the database and uh, what you searched for. Let's go and have a look at that function. So, yeah, so um, a, a search in CouchDB, this is all based on CouchDB, this implementation. Um, in a way, it's irrelevant, but I, um, I want to explain how it's done so that you can uh, understand the full picture. The way you um, uh, find stuff in CouchDB is you write some JavaScript, which is a uh, basically constructs an index of the stuff in your database. So for every entry, um, 
in your database, it runs this, this snippet of JavaScript and uh, uses the answer of that uh, to build an index, <coughs> um, which you can then quickly look things up with. Um, so uh, I must say before we start looking at this in detail that this is a, a bad example of this. Um, it's not done the right way and hopefully I'll improve it soon. Uh, but basically we have a function which takes in a document which is a thing in the CouchDB database. Uh, you should always check that that document actually has the stuff you want. So we're saying if doc dot author, um, uh, just to check that it, that it even has an author. Maybe it's not even a poem. Maybe it's some other document in the database. Um, if it if it has an author, then we check whether the author is equal to percent s, and we're going to substitute that in. That's a bit of Python in there. We're going to substitute in um, the author we're looking for into that. Um, so if the author matches what we're looking for then we emit this um, documents ID, which basically means uh, add an entry into the index uh, uh, whose key is the ID of this document. Get me out of the way. Okay, so here's the actual search poems function. That was just a bit of JavaScript in a string up at up the top there. So search poems takes in the database on the search. And what it does is it calls db.poems.query um, and passes in the JavaScript, which we've got above, and it substitutes in the author name. So it's basically saying, uh, run this bit of um, JavaScript for all the entries in the database with, with this author name substituted in, and then um, uh, for everything you find, we return res brackets value, which basically means the um, the ID of that document. It's the thing on the right-hand side, the second argument to emit, basically, which is the same as the first. We're just saying um, index this ID and the, the value should be the ID. So um, we're just returning the ID basically of all the poems we find. Um, we're using this um, dot query function on a poems collection which basically runs a one-off index, uses it and then throws it away. And that's why I say this is um, uh, not, uh, not a good implementation. It's, um, uh, it's an inefficient way to do it. We could definitely make an index that um, could last longer that was based on all the author names instead of making an index that is specifically tailored to this author name. Anyway, it does work, and you do get back the uh, poems for that author. Uh, so yeah, a few things to say about that. It uses an ad hoc view. That's what that query thing is. Um, we're passing in JavaScript to run immediately, uh, and as I said, that's clearly wrong. Uh, at the moment, it only searches for the for an exact author name. So you, you saw there was an equals if author equals blah. So even if we typed um, just a part of the name, uh, you wouldn't get it back. Um, and uh, something that's a sort of a deeper problem that we need to think through is how are we going to search for author and title and the text of the poem um, in a way that gets back results uh, in an order that makes sense to the user. Especially if we search for a common word like and, there's going to be authors and titles and um, poems that um, have the word and or, par or the partial word and in them. Um, how do we do that? So in, in a smallish system, what you might do is think, well, if an author name it matches exactly, then that's almost certainly the right thing to do. So we should return all, all author matches and then all title matches, and then if we can't find any of them, we'll return any matches that match the, um, the actual text of the poem. In a situation like this, we can't work like that. When we're working with um, a very large collection, which is what the intention is here, something like the size of YouTube, um, there's essentially no end to the number of search results um, for author, for example. Uh, there are just so many that it's practically infinite. So the idea of returning all the authors uh, and then later on returning all the titles uh, doesn't make sense. We need somehow to mix up these results. Um, uh, and this, the simplest way would be to just alternate uh, or just go author, title, text, author, title, text. And then you can get, then you know for sure, um, even if whatever the user is searching for, whatever type of thing the user means, uh, it will come back somewhere. Uh, you know, if it matches well, it will come back on the first page. Uh, you know, the better thing to do would be to somehow measure the, the relevance, um, but that is really a particularly hard problem, and, and to some extent, that's the kind of secret source of um, some of the best websites out there. So, um, really difficult. Um, what else was I going to say about that? Yeah, and, uh, if you if you're searching for a particular author name, for example, you might think, well, if there's an exact match on that author. Um, we should just retain all of their poems and not bother about the title. But what if um, what if someone was searching for a poem about that person? 
um, which surely there must be some poems with the, uh, someone else's name in the title. Um, so we can't make uh, straightforward assumptions about um, what the person means when they're searching. We have to uh, we have to be careful that we we retain all different types of results. So all of this is kind of leading towards the question: Well, why don't we provide a kind of advanced search instead of this, um, where you can say you say that you're searching for the author of the title or the text? I mean, I think that might be a feature that we could provide at some point, but to me, that's a really obscure feature. Um, it's really painful to have to search a site by saying what you're searching for. What you want is one box in the corner to say search, and then it just finds what you're looking for. So, um, however we can provide, uh, if we can provide results in that form, uh, then that's just better. Anything else is kind of an admission of defeat. Okay, so that's how we're providing uh, search through our REST API. Um, and that's it for today. Um, and future talks are going to cover um, security, how we make sure that some people can only do certain things um, and, and some people can do other things. Um, there's going to be all different uh, possibilities for security. I'll start with the simplest one I can think of uh, and then discuss whether we even need any of the others, um, uh, which you can probably tell uh, I sort of think maybe you don't. Um, Check out the YouTube page for more videos on REST APIs and all kinds of other things like uh, Lisp and how to write your first ever computer program. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter where I mostly tweet about blog posts I've written and videos I've made. Um, you can follow my blog where I occasionally give my opinion about um, things and I talk about my open source projects and I stick my videos on there. Uh, if you're interested in uh, any of my open source projects, have a look at artificialworlds.net. Um, which is basically just a big list of uh, projects I've done, including the uh, uh, new programming language I'm writing called Pepper, which uh, which I'm starting to change my mind completely about at the moment, which uh, we'll find out more about soonish, hopefully. Uh, so hopefully somewhere on your screen at the moment there is a subscribe button. Um, if you want to get more videos, click that, and see you next time.